Data loss prevention is a feature that a lot of folks are interested in. Uh, this one, of course, gives us the ability to secure users from maliciously, and this is a big one that I try to stress, unintentionally emailing sensitive data from the network. There's a lot of people with good intentions that are just, they've got their head in a lot of places, are working on lots of different projects. Some of them are maybe really sensitive, some of them are totally not sensitive. Maybe you have somebody that never works on sensitive data working with a group that always does. There's a good chance that somebody could mishandle data. Um, DLP is something that we can leverage, uh, and we're talking about the ESA here, but it's something that we can leverage in other solutions as well. So when we're trying to screen for, again, coming back to unintentionally, are people accidentally, unintentionally disclosing credit card numbers, bank account numbers, passport numbers, et cetera? If we can find it, passing through this uh, engine, there's a good chance that somebody else out there on the internet that's scanning internet traffic. Remember, uh, internet routing tables are manipulated all the time. About 85% of routers across the internet are susceptible to BGP hijacking. So traffic gets pushed around all the time to places that it shouldn't go. If you're able to get a hold of that traffic stream, you can grab the email, you can grab the attachments, you can look through what's there. We just want to make sure, as security administrators looking at what's leaving our organization, it's not credit card numbers, bank account numbers, passport numbers, whatever is sensitive to your organization. Again, leveraging those dirty word lists are going to help us find this. And there's also a lot of good pre-built regular expressions, which are just formulas to match on a text pattern that are going to be published and included with that DLP software. So we can just use a drop down and say, this is the type of stuff that I want to, uh, to capture. And of course, additionally, you can create your own roles. So DLP is off by default. It's going to need an additional license. It has what they call the DLP assessment wizard. It's going to give you a streamlined view of what's possible. It's going to be interactive and say, what is it that you want to look for? And then it's going to guide you into the best rule sets for discovering that type of data. Again, DLP is something that we apply to outbound email. Uh, DLP on the way in is a little bit funny because it's already too late. Uh, that's across the public internet, right? So it's used as a last security feature for scanning the outbound email, and specific DLP settings can be configured per outgoing mail policy. That's just saying that we can create different policies for different groups of users, right? IT, HR, et cetera, and we can apply different dirty word lists to different groups of users. So here they're just showing you the DLP engine and the way that their scanning flow works. So you look at the message itself, but don't forget that we're also looking at the attachments within the message. We can even look at things like metadata. The metadata is slick because let's say that I work for uh, an organization that's you know, doing a lot of research and we're creating different types of attacks. The attacks are cyber-based and none of them are public. So if I've got a way to insert just a funny word or a funny variable or a funny string into all of my attack code, Let's say that there are just a lot of Python, uh, Python scripts. Um, as people take and use those within the organization, if somebody ever tries to email one of them to themselves, I want to be able to see that that went by. So is that variable going to appear in the text body? No. Is it going to appear in the file name? No. But it's going to appear you know, within the, the body of that attachment, or it could appear within the metadata. So again, these are places that we could look to see, is there something sensitive? Uh, again, when you're looking at trying to set up almost like a trap or a trigger on certain documents, don't forget that the metadata is something we can look at. And it's something that's typically uh, not looked at, unfortunately, by a lot of people handling data. So what we see here is the fact that we've got uh, a basically a severity score. Because it's an intelligent engine that's looking at lots of different criteria before making a decision, what we've got here is a score. So we say with you know, a scale of zero to 100, what is our kind of confidence and what is our, our attitude towards this piece of software? And of course, you've got the severity ratings that increase along with the number. So we go from ignore to low to medium to high to critical. So that's just a name of a rating. This is just the score. But the way that you should realize or kind of interpret this is if the score is in that range, this is the action that I'm going to take. And this is really pretty smart. Like in the old days, it was very, very knee jerk. I would have like a regular expression and I'd say, if you see the word confidential, it was like, yeah, it'd be like, pow, quarantine. 
That's all that there was to it. Now we're doing this based on a lot of different criteria. So the DLP policy manager, you can create different policies. Again, we've got the order, can be processed from top to bottom. We can look for things like PCI information, credit card numbers, corporate financials, passport numbers, network diagrams, etc. You want to add a new policy, we just click the box, give it a name that's going to be intuitive to people that aren't you, uh, give it a description because not everything is intuitive to everybody, maybe add some additional data there, and then we hit the fun part. We start talking about well, what is it that we're actually going to be matching on and what are the actions that we'll be taking. The scale that we mentioned before can be modified as well. You see it here in the default state, but we can edit the scale and we can move these sliders around. Again, just custom tuning it for your environment. So DLP is not a whole lot different than any of the other engines that we've looked at so far from the sense that it's gonna leverage a policy, the policy can be applied to different users, and the policy is simply a set of if and then conditions. We say if we see these dirty words being leveraged, then take this particular action. There's predefined uh, pre policy templates that are available, so we can just drop a box down and say, okay, go ahead and look for bank routing numbers. And if those are included in documents or anything that's passing back and forth, let us know. It's a great way to find people internally that are gathering information, especially people that aren't real sophisticated in trying to pass that data you know, maybe out to their private Gmail account or something. As Soon as that data pattern goes by, we're gonna be able to grab it. Um, custom classifiers can be used for creating custom DLP policies. I think I said that a couple times. Um, the risk factor assigned to a scanned message is something that we can also tweak. And then order matters, right? We said again, it's gonna be used from top down. The first hit that we get, we're gonna go ahead and take that action. So put our most specific matches at the top, put our very broad actions towards the bottom. There's counters on these, so we can see when we've got matches. If we've got things that never have matches, you may just wanna send through like a test email just to see a trigger. So here's just an example of setting this up. Under mail policies, you'll find DLP policy manager. If you kick that off, it'll bring us to this screen from which we can add DLP policies. When you go to create a DLP policy, Again, there's going to be pre-built uh, rule sets in there to just help you do this a little bit easier. So if it's FERPA, GLBA, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, etc., we can just use pre-built solutions. When leveraging our classifiers, remember that they're going to require additional supporting information to make a match, such as an expiration date, name of a card issuer, etc. So just following 16 digits, eh, maybe that doesn't match because we didn't find the supporting information. Um, you know, do we see an expiration date? A lot of times what I would look for, uh, I won't draw out 16 X's, but you get the idea. If I saw 16 characters, and you can even kind of talk about the, the tempo of the numbers. Is it four in a row? Is it two sets of eight? Is it one set of 16? And they go, yes. And they go, was it followed by and this is where we could get creative, put dates a couple different ways. Two digits, four digits, six digits, whatever. Um, is there a CVV somewhere? Is there a three digit code that verifies we have the, the physical card? Again, what we're just looking for is a series of numbers that matches this pattern. If we can match it, we think we've got something good. Um, now if we're too broad, you're gonna get false positives. But when we become more specific, we're gonna get better matches. So what happens when we do get a match? Well, we can come in and we can say that it should still be delivered, but maybe it should just be logged. Alternatively, we can drop it. Alternatively, we can quarantine it. This is the primary action. Now, in addition to this, we can add additional steps. Send a copy policy to quarantine, encrypt the message, send message to alternate destination, like forward it to investigations at cisco.com, uh, send DLP violation notification message to the sender. So it's like, hey, you tried to send something nasty and it's been reported. It's not a good feeling to get. Um, we could alter the subject header and then we could add a disclaimer as well. And of course, when we create our outgoing mail policy, you would associate the DLP rule that you create right here. 
And again, you can see that being done group by group. You've got IT with network diagrams. We've got sales with credit card numbers. We've got HR with social security numbers. It feels like that's pretty logical the way that those map out. 